Hey everybody, so today I have this very cool kit that I received as a gift from a local member of the Tampa Hackerspace. This kit is a solder it yourself menorah to help celebrate the Festival of Lights Hanukkah. So in this kit, you get a whole bunch of resistors, LEDs, capacitor, more resistors, and some cool chips. This fantastic instruction sheet comes with it to help identify all of the parts, including identifying the colored resistors, all of the different components, including the microchips, and finally, a nice little schematic drawing of the circuit board that we'll be soldering everything onto. Now, what's very cool about this kit is if you checked out my 555 timer uh, soldering kit, it is actually based on this chip. So we're gonna be using a 555 in application. Now, enough of this. Be sure to watch that video. The link will be up here. This tiny chip right here is a 555 timer. And with this menorah kit, uh, we'll be using it to help light up the individual lights for each day. Now, as far as hardware goes, I've got my standards here, my Kester solder on the spool, my Hago 599B uh, for cleaning off the tip of my TS100. But I have a new tool. This is the Hago OmniVice. I'll be using this today to mount and hold the circuit board while uh, attaching and soldering all of the devices. This kit looks simple enough with only a handful of components that we'll need to identify, place, and solder. So with that, we'll go ahead and kick it off and just get started. Let's go ahead and clean up our workspace and we'll take some parts that we don't need really until the end and put them off to the side. For now, we can take our menorah kit. On the back um, is only just, you know, additional pads. Um, now I would like to make a shout out to Paul Henley for creating this kit and hosting a soldering class at the Tampa Hackerspace. As you can see here, all of the different uh, manufacturing techniques are being used to help draw and paint this image. Silk screen in white ink to highlight the location of the components and a black solder mask to identify where each arm of the menorah is. Very cool design and very creative use of the different layers that you can put on a PCB. So following this design, We'll use the indicators on the board in the white silk screen following the diagram on our sheet. We'll identify the parts, including the directional components like these LEDs. Those will be located on top with the flat side facing to my right. Other than that, each integrated circuit features a notch on an end, which is also matched with a notch on the chip. This will help us determine the orientation. You can clearly see the notch on the left chip because the solder mask exposed the bare copper and the silkscreen could not print on top of it. Other than that, the 9 volt and its receptacle will attach to the back to help mount and keep it held up vertically as a base weight. So let's go in and knock out some of the big components. So this Omnivice is a fantastic uh, tool here and it's very simple to place a circuit board um, within the rubber grip and easily solder down the components. We can start with the dip sockets. This is going to allow us to um, place and remove the chips that fit into them. To place the sockets, I'll start by flipping the board over and slightly screwing it down. Now this is a weighted device, in fact it's very heavy. And because of that, the board does not move when performing different soldering techniques or working on it. So, we'll take the chip. I can simply place it in underneath, align the pins, and now the pins are showing through and I'll be able to solder it all in place. But before I do that, let's go ahead and set an initial solder point. Keep this thing up and move some of this wire out of the way. Again, I like to solder at about 300 degrees Celsius. All right, so we'll prep one of these solder pads. 
just like that. Then with the notch facing the bottom, as indicated on the sheet, we can align the pins underneath. And once we have everything in place, we will simply melt the solder for the first pin. And that's it, it is now held and we're ready to install the rest of the pins. I'll put a little bit of force underneath again and we'll solder a pin on the other end. Now that we've leveled everything off, uh, tie lapse. And just like that, our first chip mount is in place. On to the second one. And just like that, our second IC dip socket is mounted in place. Let's take a look at our progress. looking really good. As we can see here, it matches and the notch also matches as indicated. Perfect. Next, let's go ahead and knock out some of these lower components. To do that, we well, can take the button next. Now the button does have legs that have a little bit of a bend in them and that allows it to simply press and hold tight. So we don't have to worry about that one and gravity. Next, we'll align the switch. That looks fantastic. All right, in the meantime, let's go ahead and prep our door board back. Because these holes have a large th larger thermal mass, we have to add a little bit more solder and we have to take a little bit more time to make sure that they fill in and correctly adhere. All right, that's good. Switch works. Next, we see some indicators here for resistor 10, resistor 11, and capacitor one. So we'll follow the diagram locate the components, read the colors, and get them placed. First, we'll get placed the two resistors. So resistor 10, 150K, brown, green, yellow, gold. That one is this resistor right here. So we'll tear those off. Held pretty nicely. We can bend the legs outwards to hold it in place. Next, that only leaves this resistor. Bend the legs. Actually, we'll flip it around to have the gold match on the same side. Not that the resistors are directional, but I just like the way that all of the colors line up. We'll place the resistor in here, and again, we will bend the legs so it holds. Finally, the last component that we'll do on this set is gonna be capacitor one. Actually, it looks like capacitor one is not used. My mistake we'll actually be using capacitor two, which is gonna be this little tantalum capacitor right here. Capacitor two is located right underneath the two resistors. And uh, in our case, it is non-polar. That means it is not directional. 
Now, some electrolytic capacitors are going to be polar or directional, but in our case, this little capacitor is not. Therefore, it has no indicator of which side is positive and negative, and it really doesn't matter right now. We'll do the same thing where we'll bend the legs out to help hold them out in place. And then finally, once we're all set and done, let's go ahead and flip it over. So, bring it over here to the mount. Perfect. Resistors look great, capacitor looks great. And we can trim the legs. Next, what we want to do is uh, let's get the additional resistors soldered into place. That is going to be the nine resistors across the top for the LEDs. So, we'll pull these apart and one at a time, we will place them. Next, we'll go ahead and get these nine yellow LEDs soldered across the top. Now we can see from the silkscreen indication which side is going to be positive and negative. In fact, the circle seems to have a flat side. Now an LED also happens to have a flat side. It's a little bit hard to see on camera, but the shorter pin is going to be the flat side. So with that in mind, We'll go ahead and place all of the LEDs to get them soldered. My plan is to bend them up slightly so that they face upwards like a candle. All the LEDs are now mounted in place. Let's go ahead and get them soldered. Back into the Omnivice. Bring that down. And with a nice clean tip, we will take this from a different direction. I want to hold the LED in place so that it's flush and we'll solder it. So I'll place just a little bit of solder on the pad and move the LED into the mounting position. Now try not to touch the metal because it is still hot. Let's do the rest. While I have this warmed up, I'll go ahead and get the 9 volt mount also soldered in place. We can see here 
that positive is to the right, which is going to be the smaller of the two. That also happens to be indicated on the side of the battery. So, holding this up in here, we can see that it's going to be a large terminal. So, I'll prepare one of the ports. <laughs> We are done, so we'll turn that off. Okay, now to trim. This looks fantastic. Now that we have all the LEDs in place, pointing upwards, all of the resistors, the two supporting resistors, the capacitor, the dip sockets, our button, and our power switch. All that we need to do now is plug in our integrated circuits. So the first one is we'll highlight this chip. It's gonna be our eight pin. Now the eight pin is known as a 4094. Now, according to our documentation here, our our shift register, all right? And that shift register is gonna help us, well, you'll see when we light it up, but that shift register, register is gonna be storing information about which LEDs to light up or how many. The second chip will fit is this eight pin dip socket, and this is our 555 timer. Now remember, this is what a dip, uh, through hole dip 555 timer normally looks like. And again, this is our giant kit. So big difference. So let's get this 555 chip into the board following the notch on our chip. Bend the pins in just a little bit so that they can grip and don't fall out the sides of our dip socket. Slides right into place. Same thing for this chip, our 4094. The notch is going to be right there at the top, matching the notch on the paper and the notch on the board. Bend the pins in just slightly. This is going to again help it with the insertion. And we will go ahead and install. And just like that, both chips are firmly seated and aligned properly. So, it is now time to light this menorah. Okay, so, in reality, not everything goes perfectly. And I did make a mistake. I placed the battery connector on backwards. So I had to real quickly just fix it on camera by heating up the pads, removing the component, flipping it around, and putting it back in place. So... As promised, let's light up this menorah. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll take the bat negative side and align it with the negative component and our power switch is still off. So let's plug this in. No magic smoke so far. Next, we'll go ahead and follow the instructions here. Specifically to operate, slide the switch down and attach the nine volt battery. Check. Turn on the light by holding the light button while moving the switch up. Only the center LED should light up. And just like that, it is lit. Let me go ahead and dim some of the light in here. All right, now we can see the LED. So we can see that the center one is indeed lit up. Now, next step is to get the rest of the LEDs going. Each press of the light button should light one additional candle. All right, let's give that a try. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight days. What happens when we push it? Oh, that's it. Now they're all set. I guess we can turn it off to reset it.
That is a very cool kit. So this video happened to be recorded on the fifth night of Hanukkah. So in this case, let's go ahead and light up the fifth night. One, two, three, four, five. Now our menorah is so bright. This was a fantastically fun kit. And thank you so much to the individual who shared it with me. And thank you to the team over at the Tampa Hackerspace and Paul Henley for putting this together, making it available, and making it a lot of fun to assemble and learn about soldering in a great, fun, festive way. And with that, we're all done here. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. I put that on fucking backwards. I put that on backwards. Oh, man.